I'm going to show you is how we ended up transforming a 104-year-old um, Allied Health Institute. So, so we teach mostly nursing. We started um, the founder of Oakland, um, Samuel Merritt, founded a nursing school. He was a doctor and very entrepreneurial. He started a nursing school. Now we also teach um, podiatry, physical therapy, occupational therapy, and uh, physician's assistant. So it's quite a... Um, so, so, and we're in Oakland, California, and what we did is we decided that we were very committed to creating an outcomes-based education. So rather than sort of following the traditional model, which is what they were calling just-in-case learning, so just in case we're going to give you all this um, knowledge and you're going to repeat it back, we wanted to really engage learners and have them demonstrate the um, skills, knowledge, and attitudes that were being set by the accrediting bodies because each of our programs is accredited by you know nursing, podiatry, et cetera. So, and we really wanted to get at um, deep learning because one of the problems that is um, quite alarming actually is that um, students coming in in the last five years are increasingly unable to um, transfer knowledge. So they'll be able to um, they're really good at memorizing large amounts of material and repeating it back in a multiple choice question, but then not able to then take that same information and transfer it into a practical application. So we, we really moved towards application of demonstrating knowledge. And so what we did here is we made a graphical um, interface for an aligning goals and objectives, educational learning outcomes at the top level. So up here you have Every graduate of our institution will um, demonstrate compassion, ethics, demonstrate critical thinking. What? It's too far? You know, this it's, it's out of I don't, it's Oh, it's out of focus. Oh, it's okay. oh that is terrible. But it really doesn't, it, the, the content of it is irrelevant, really. <laughs> so these are what all of, so these are what all of the student graduates will demonstrate. And then each individual program has their own learning outcomes. So nursing has nursing outcomes, right? And these, um, these modules demonstrate the learning outcomes. So this is learning outcome number one. Um, demonstrate respect for the inherent dignity of patients is the first learning outcome. So how do you demonstrate that? That's sort of a lofty goal. Well, all of these black dots down here. Now it's swimming. <laughs> Oh, that's just because it's moving. Oh, that's clean. Okay, so each of these black dots that I'm rolling over is a um, is a course learning outcome. So this is something that so for instance, here's the program learning outcome, which is demonstrate respect. Okay. Um, Rob, I think you should just leave it. Okay. Yeah. I thought you were pointing on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so the, the learning outcome is, uh, the program learning outcome is lofty, and then here we have the actual course learning outcome of what the teacher is actually teaching to, more specific. And then here we actually have evidence of student learning. And so in this case, I'm just clicking on a file um, that is an actual PDF of a poster presentation that a student presented at a, at a conference. Um, this is just their, um, the abstract of this conference presentation and with actual teacher's comments. So it's actual authentic evidence of student learning. So moving away from tests to really authentic documents that show, and it can be graphics, videos, um, images, sound files, whatever form the authentication takes. So. Um, so this is what, what we did. So now, how does this transform learning? Well, one of the things is, is that we wanted, so this particular um, um, discipline is fairly well balanced, but I'm going to show you, um, well, first of all, I'll play the sound. So this is what, this is our nursing program. Now here's where your cards come in and your, your candies. Okay, so you see that your card should correspond with one of these colors. So dark blue is compassion, 
Green is ethics, or teal, some people call it. Critical thinking is purple. Okay, you all see that? Um, so then, um, and these are the row, these columns are the program learning outcomes. So this program has 11 outcomes. Now we're gonna play this as music. And when, when you see your color is being played as a musical score, I want you to raise your card. Okay, and so, why, so what this does is it really gets faculty engaged using both sides of their brain to really think critically about analyzing our curricular data and seeing is this, so the exercise is intended to see, to get you engaged and then to look at this data, is, is this how we really want our curriculum mapped? Are our values being reflected? So here we go, we're gonna do one dress rehearsal. So the columns are gonna play, so when it's aligned, so you're gonna hear PLO1, it's gonna play this series of notes, and when your color's played, you raise your card. Okay, ready? Any new insight? Is this how you would think you would want a modern day nursing curriculum mapped? Anything, anything underrepresented? Uh, yes. What's that? Stand up, please. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I think the evidence base would be nice to have more of them. Evidence base would definitely be nice. So you would really want your your nurses to stop doing what is is like. Well, we we've always done it that way. <laughs> right? I, I just heard that episiotomies, it turns out there's zero evidence that episiotomy helps women heal faster after childbirth, yet it's still common practice. Zero evidence, right? So anyone else see anything else that they feel like if you, if you were, you know, you might have to be treated by a nurse, is this the values you want? All of them. Compassion. Ethics. Communication. Right. Competence. Compassion is really the most um, shocking because what is the one thing I mean there's two things you want in a nurse right one that they be clinically competent and two that they be compassionate and in our curriculum we have one we have um, one learning outcome aligned with compassion Ooh, that was my observation if that's if we only got one note and it's the rest of the tune from there I'd be a little bit worried about her holding my hand exactly <laughs> exactly what and the concept of empathy I don't see empathy yeah. Right. Is it part of compassion? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. So, so what this has done at our school is, is began to start actual conversations across the curriculum um, about these kinds of big issues. So before that, we were sort of looking at everything, each individual course um, down here in the weeds. But this way, we can look at both the big picture and the and the weeds. And then we also, um, we are also accredited by many different kinds of organizations. So this is one initiative from the um, quality, safety, improvement in nursing. And they, so we were able to map our curriculum to the standards. So the standards are patient-centered care, by, which is marked by a diamond shape, teamwork and collaboration, which is a star, evidence-based practice. So we were able to map our curriculum to our accrediting body's standards. And now this is why we give out the, um, the, to the um, pipe cleaners. So get out your pipe cleaner. Actually, I'm going to show you a different program. They got stopped. Stopped. Oh. Stop <laughs> I have another pack. Over here, sir. Um, and did every? Oh. Um, okay. So, what I want you to do is very quickly pick one of the shapes. So it's diamond, star, circle, square, triangle, or informatics. And. And now what we're looking at is our nurse anesthesiology program. 
right? So, you know, the, the um, nurse anesthesiologist is often the actual person who administers your anesthesia, right? right? So this is a very critical role. So we're going to listen to how our curriculum is mapped based on the quality um, improvement in nursing initiative. And we're going to play the same game. So when your symbol is played, so the symbols go um, are this way. OK, so you ready? Oh, make your own symbol. Make your symbol. So you just make a symbol really quickly. Just you pick a square girl, square. Do we pick one of the categories? Exactly. You pick one of the categories, which is patient-centered care, which is a, a diamond shape, um, teamwork and collaboration, which is a star, evidence-based practice is a circle, um, quality improvement is a square, safety is a um, triangle, and informatics is this shape, which I forgot the name of. Some, somebody knows the name of it. Hexagon, hexagon. <laughs> Polygon. Um, and they don't have to be perfect. It's just a quick shape. And if you haven't, if you haven't gotten your shape together yet, then just imagine it's that shape. OK. So now we're going to look at this uh, program. We're going to. And that silence is it's waiting for all of these empty spaces to play. So silence means not aligned. Oh, OK. Here, I'll, I'll make it bigger. Let me start here. I'll show you this one right here. Here, OK. So here, you can't see it? OK, wait, let me make it bigger for you. OK, and I'll point. No, Kenneth. No, OK, I won't point. OK, here we go. Anything jump out at you of like what what you notice about this curriculum? Yeah, teamwork really is bad. Teamwork is really bad. At the end, when there's a problem, they start calling in the team. <laughs> right? <laughs> teamwork is really bad. We have a bunch of stars in this room. <laughs> a bunch of stars in this room. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, um, look at who did the polygon, the the the, the hexagon. So so the one with the hexagon, only one. Um, learning outcome in our in our curriculum has to do with informatics, right? How many people here think that um, anesthesiologists should, in fact, be pretty crackerjack with? <laughs> okay. So anyway, what this allowed was this kind of deep conversation in large groups. Where so, for instance, when I presented to the um, faculty of nursing, uh, about 50 people attended the, the the faculty meeting for the School of Nursing. Before me, they had a, a policy vote in which a room full of people about this size, um, only seven people bothered to vote on the policy change. And then I got up and we had a, um, you know, we had everyone participate in looking at their curriculum and discussing what they wanted changed. And at the end, I said, so how many people thought this was valuable? And all but seven people raised their hand. And so I, I figured, OK, that's a big improvement. At least we got people engaged in the conversation about what do we want uh, our values to be. You know, what are we teaching what we say we're teaching? Um, and then what has happened um, also with this is that, um, oh, I want to show you one more thing that we've done. So one of the things that's happened is that we've really ended up transforming the whole institution. Because when you start by looking at authentic evidence of student learning and just get away from just looking at test scores, um, it, it invites this whole emphasis on teaching and learning. And so after this, after we initiated this way of evaluating um, student learning, we also adopted a policy where faculty is now evaluated 
um, based on their teaching and learning and how well they're meeting the course learning outcomes. Which for higher ed, I mean, that sounds like duh, but for higher ed, <laughs> it's quite unusual. Um, and they've also engaged in um, peer review of teaching and learning, and so that um, not as a not as a um, punitive or, or for rank and promotion, but actually for staff development. And so people are beginning to share resources. Are you uh, using student evaluations of professors and teachers? We do use that, but we felt like that was um, a very in in um, a very limited measure, because oftentimes um, you know there's lots of correlations like. Teachers who give better grades get better evaluations, and teachers who are African American across the board get lower scores. Um, and we we figured it couldn't be that all of our African American teachers were were subpar. You know, there there was a lot of things that were bi bias was coming into it, and so we're looking at teaching and learning as not of you know yes the students' enjoyment is is always important, but it's not the only factor because you're perceived. You know, you, and, and I look at my own learning experience, you know, five years later, I'm like, oh, now I see why that professor spent so much time on what I didn't think was important then. Um, so this is a way of really measuring the effectiveness of the teacher in mastering the outcomes, and it's sort of at the heart of competency-based education. But um, so we changed that policy. We also changed our research policy so that Faculty are, it's considered research when you engage in reflective practice about your teaching and learning, so not only rewarding teachers for research in their, in their field, but also reflecting on their teaching and learning. Uh, did you have a mesa level discussion on what the purpose of education is? Because all of this depends on what you view the purpose of education to be. If you view the purpose of education to be to create a compliant individual, then you will have a certain set of colors there. If you view the purpose of education to be different, maybe to create more critical thinking, um, it's, it's different. So all bearing in mind that we are a product of our education. Well, you know, we did have that um, very limited discussion because our institution uh, is really um, training is a training institute preparing people for for the allied health fields mostly and so I mean we do have a doctorate of podiatry but it's it's very applied and it's very highly regulated so we do have those but it's very limited in scope and accreditation is mm, you know to, for a, an, an institution like ours accreditation is like profit is to a business, you know, that it's the bottom line that we are compliant with the standards that are imposed on us. And we have, we can, we have a little wiggle room. We can add our own flavor, but like for instance, um, you know, compassion is, is, not, is not one of the standards in the healthcare and the nursing, yet we add, add that as our flavor. Um, yeah. So Valerie, just to be clear, Besides the student evaluation of teaching, could you explain just what are the other criteria for for educational outcomes? I don't know what you mean. Uh, you said teachers are judged or evaluated on the effectiveness of their teaching. What are the criteria? Well, the criteria is, so this is really a qualitative view. So the criteria is we look at the learning outcomes and we look at the evidence and we say, are your students um, demonstrating these outcomes? So and, it's and what kind of evidence? The evidence could be uh, a paper, it could be a videotape, it could be a clinical evaluation, it could be a PowerPoint presentation that the students made. And who decides? The faculty. So they do it for themselves, they decide for themselves. So first what we do is at the first level, yes, the first level we say make a portfolio of excellence of student learning. So when you get something that is excellent from a student, document it here as, as part of our institutional portfolio. And then we triangulate and we say, um, you know, if this is what excellence looks like and it's great, then we can extrapolate what a B or a C might look like. But if what you're putting as evidence is what I, consider to be crappy, imagine what their B and C work looks like. And so we've had, um, be, we, so we've made this transparent, so instead of having everything be secret within the classroom, we're making a transparent portfolio, and in fact, 
you can see in this page we have our entire school curriculum on one page and any faculty can go in and look at any other thing and say, um, oh, here's your learning outcome. And um, we also have this, the faculty can also post their um, um, assignments. I, I'm not going to make you look at it, but they can look at their, they can post their assignments and their rubrics and other faculty can then use that or adapt that for their course. So you're giving them a whole lot of homework. Are they doing it? And are they also starting to teamwork on it? They're just starting to, and um, one of the things, this has really helped because we opened up the whole faculty, the whole school, because before everything was these, you know, siloed, and so one school had no idea what another school was doing, and so we've, this has helped that, beginning that practice, we're calling it interprofessional collaboration, and so when, it, and then simultaneously we have mini grants where we, we give faculty really small amounts of money to, um, uh, write up what they're doing using innovative practices in teaching and learning and then sharing it with colleagues. And we've gotten 20, per the first year out, we got 20% of the faculty to engage. And so then they're, then now this year, we're hoping to get 30% um, to, to and how, engage. And how is the mini grant an incentive? Does it replace teaching time or is it just? No, no, we give them, we give them cash. We give them $500 for engaging in an action research project where they try something new in their classroom and then they document what were the barriers, um, what were the benefits, and then they have to document it with evidence of student learning in some way. And some of them choose anecdotal evidence, you know, this is what the student said, or they'll, they, they'll look at, they also will often look at the grade scores because we are very test driven. So they'll look at this, the test scores, and they'll also look at, um, you know, discussion board quality, things like that. So all, all kinds of different measures. How long have you been doing this? Well, we started um, three years ago, and we've so this is the third year, and um, and that now the faculty are really starting to become more motivated to participate in this because we changed. Not when I say we, I mean the faculty changed. So the faculty organization voted to be evaluated based on their teaching and learning. This was not imposed by the administration. So they, they, um, it was a faculty-led. Did you guys invent this, or is did yes. this come from somewhere else? No. Um, so so I designed this and worked with the programmer who did the programming. Thank you. We are sharing it with other institutions, and thanks for, for reminding me, which is, um, I even made an instance for this group. <laughs> um, and so here we have, um, here I just, based on, um, you know, really quick, I just took some of the goals that we might be talking about today and made an instance here for the California Health Corps. Um, goals and objectives, and you can see it's very sparsely populated. But if anybody has a project that they want added to this, um, so I put the, um, May Lin came up with the, the high level categories as positive process, pro sorry, positive progress, caring competence, um, that has good examples, includes reflection and learning, and a feedback loop. And so we've, if, in, if this is a way that we can, uh, one way we can all add to, um, add your projects and your metrics and whatever evidence you want um, to this group. But it's, it's a marvelous invention, really. Thank you. Yeah, and we're, we, the, the, we're, we're just starting to try and figure out about launching it into a company because the school said they were not, Really, they, they're happy to share it, but they're not really interested in shepherding that process. So if anybody wants to help out on that, I love um, advice, mentorship, well, partnerships. Show of hands. Do you want to show of hands? Yes. Great. So you know, by the way, Valerie, it turns out that the information you get in school is usually obsolete and completely wrong by the time you graduate from the university already. And in medical school, the replacement of information in the doctor's head 
with an information source in, in an iPhone or some other mobile app is rapidly making it completely irrelevant for these doctors, with the exception of you know surgeries and even robotic surgeries moving in. So the notion that we would be shifting the learning process toward exactly what you're doing, compassion, understanding, caregiving, is so important in terms of what these people are actually going to be doing. Because they're going to have a protocol that they're going to follow. And it's going to be changing as times show that they don't do they didn't do what they were doing before. I mean, in the early 20th century, you were better off not going to a doctor in terms of survival. Um, and it only with the sulfur drugs and such became really beneficial to beneficial to go to see a doctor to get better. And there are many, many illnesses now that still holds true. So um, it seems like something you should be able to promulgate throughout the whole medical industry. Yeah, we, we, we've, I mean, we've gotten all the accrediting bodies that have come to um, accredit us so far. I think it's been four since we started. They've all been like, everyone should be using this tool. Right. So, and we've gotten the highest possible marks. So I think it's really resonating within the educational community now. I think my biggest challenge is how do I, how do I, we've done a, a really innovative job in this small school um, now, how do we scale that up? And I would love input from the community. See, I'd love to see this in elementary education. That would be stunning. Well, if you have any ideas on how to do that. Valerie, given that you're going into the allied system, are you getting analytics in terms of what the actual drug compliance, things like blood transfusions, where a nurse can have a lot of a cognitive skills, but if we see a lot of problems in a medical system where blood transfusions, infections, whatever it is that causes illness rather than cures can be traced back and then be looked at in terms of your program, is there a feedback loop? Because I'm kind of aware through the major health systems that some of them have really poor records in terms of the very basic stuff. You're, you're, you risk getting blood transfusions in many of our hospitals. We could um, make course, yeah. we could make an instance like that. Um, that is not what we designed this particular instance to do. But basically, this could be used for any system, not only educational, but also you know, in it, not project management in the sense of you know schedules and and um, and that not not a Gantt chart. But this, you know, for seeing our is a large organization with all these components meeting these goals and There's how a well. It's a, it's a dashboard. It's a dashboard, yeah. yeah the question is the feedback loop. Well, the in other words, if you have these in the absence of what's actually happening in the hospital system and there are certain issues, right. the nurses, we're, we're seeing higher percentages of mistakes in a particular area. Does it feedback into the education system to say, hey, this is an area we have to put more emphasis on? Well, um, politically, we don't have that system in place. So technically, we can make that system, but um, the political is a different issue. So I have a question. Maybe it's for you or maybe it's for the group. Would this work that you've done be potential grist for collaborate.org.com? Uh, we heard about it. Valerie wasn't here yesterday, so and Kevin was here this morning. But yeah. but Dan can say yeah, so uh, one of the things that we're starting next Thursday is to try to apply this for a new workflow development process for a clinic. So this will be integrated with collaborate.org with the people that are doing the workflows where we're trying to take the two hours, the first two hours thing that goes into a clinic and improve that by starting from scratch with you know participatory design processes and those things where they're actually adapting all their IT systems to the workflow rather than the other way around. And that's all going to be hosted and integrated with Collaborate. So that's one of the projects that she and I are outside. So I do want to say that's what the California Health Corps is about. And I drew it here. Many of the people who are here are from the California Health Corps. That was Dan Desmond. Valerie Landau is there. So we're cross-fertilizing all of these pieces I met Dan in the Federal Health Futures work. So we know what's going to happen with federally qualified health centers, 9,000 of them across the country. When we start to do this, we have natural scale for this. So. 
And yeah, I, I think it's important because you talked about you know, the clinical outcomes and, and, and improvement of treatment processes. So part of this workflow that we're going to be testing and developing and enhancing the adaptation to this is rapid diagnostics. Are they doing rep good as assessments with these? Are they providing the quality of care? Because most of the, many of the internal systems may document those, but like you said, the feedback loop isn't in there. So how can we define these feedback loops so we do not just course corrections, but actually improve the training? Right. So um, education research is all developing new education process with this. But it will include rapid diagnostics, you know, ladder flow assays, PCRs, point of use devices, all those, home remedies, all those, to really define how can an FQHC maximize its impact across the population. Well, great. Um, out of town, I'm just going to take time, but I just want to say one thing about the candy. Um, one of the reasons that we gave the candy was to, we, I often give it out to the faculty and I say, okay, so look at the color on your card and look at the candy and then later or now when you eat it, um, you know, remember that flavor associated with that competency. And one of the things that I just wanted to share is they will often come back to me like a week or a month later and say, you know, I've been thinking about ethics in our <laughs> curriculum. <laughs> and so it, it not only has the immediate effect, um, but it's really just trying to engage and gamify um, learning analytics. Fantastic. So. Fantastic.